water. This simple substance, perhaps humanity's most precious resource, is what distinguishes our planet, Earth, the blue planet, from other planets in our solar system. Now, for many of us, water in all its wondrous forms is everywhere. Everything we do is linked to water. We use it for drinking, for cooking, for cleaning, or even just recreational purposes. It's a vital nutrient to every living cell in our body. Water connects us all. And it's almost as if we have an excess of this clear liquid substance. After all, 71%, or 326 million trillion gallons of water cover planet Earth. But don't let these numbers fool you. While you and I can easily quench our thirst with a seemingly endless supply of clean water, 780 million people in the world lack access to a clean water source. While we have the ability to take access to clean water for granted, one ninth of the global population is forced to view clean water as a privilege. We are facing a global water crisis. Due to the rising population, industrial development, and economic growth, our demand for fresh water is increasing, yet the world's water resources are rapidly running dry. Areas like Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia are especially vulnerable given their arid environments. And there's an enormous disparity in the amount of water people around the world use. While in America, the average family might use 400 gallons of water per day, the average family in Africa lives on less than six. 80% of illnesses in developing countries are linked to a water-related disease, such as diarrhea, cholera, and dysentery. Yet no one is talking about this global calamity. See, when there's an airplane crash or disappearance, the story makes international news. Lack of access to clean drinking water and sanitation kills children at the same rate as six jumbo jets crashing every day. Yet the crisis faced by these children is hardly touched upon in media. And disease is just one of the drawbacks linked with inadequate water supplies, because water affects everything. In the United Nations World Water Development Report 2014, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said that water and energy are the enablers for poverty reduction, job creation, women's empowerment, and human well-being in general. Without access to clean water, there's less food production, more malnourished children, less economic activity, and the list goes on and on. And lack of access to clean drinking water forces millions of people to spend inordinate amounts of time collecting water for daily use. This burden of water collection is normally placed on women and girls who have to walk three hours to the nearest water source. That's a six hour round trip, practically a full time job. These girls are forced to drop out of school because they have to spend all of their time collecting water for their families. So let me tell you the story of a woman living in a water scarce village of Rajasthan, India. Every day, she has to walk three miles under the hot sun to collect water for her family. She has already had four miscarriages from being forced to carry these large pots of water over long distances, and she's currently five months pregnant. She fears another miscarriage, but what choice does she have other than to continue collecting water for her families? For her and many other women facing the water crisis, this already difficult journey of motherhood becomes even more challenging. Now, it's important to remember that there has been some improvement. Since 1990, two billion people have gained access to an improved drinking water source. 
and 1.9 billion people have gained access to improved sanitation facilities. Currently, in many developing countries, solar water disinfection, or SOTIS, has been used as a cost-effective means of purifying water. SOTIS is also energy efficient because it only uses solar energy for disinfection. Basically, clear plastic bottles are filled with the contaminated water and exposed to sunlight for six to eight hours. The DNA of the harmful pathogens in the water is destroyed by the powerful UV radiation coming from the sun. And this eventually rids the water of all pathogens. Now, while the SOTUS process is simple to use and requires little cost, it's often very slow. In fact, on cloudy days, it can take two consecutive days in order to purify the water. So recently, a technology called photocatalytic solar disinfection has been used to accelerate the SOTUS process. Okay, so what is photocatalysis? Well, photo means from the sun, and a catalyst is something that speeds up a reaction. So what photocatalysis is doing is speeding up the solar disinfection process. When UV radiation strikes a photocatalyst, these highly reactive oxygen species are created. And those are responsible for destroying bacteria and degrading organics in contaminated water. But there are several drawbacks to the current photocatalytic solar disinfection methods. See, traditionally, the photocatalyst is coated on the inside of clear plastic bottles. But these photocatalysts are actually commonly used in sunscreens to block UV radiation. So when they're coated on the inside of plastic bottles, they're actually blocking some of the UV radiation and diminishing the efficiency of photocatalysis. Also, these coatings are not tightly bound to the plastic bottle. So they wash off into the water and people end up drinking the photocatalyst. So three years ago, when I started investigating the global water crisis, I began my journey as a scientific researcher with the goal of overcoming these disadvantages. This project, which I started when I was in eighth grade, evolved into what is now my pervious photocatalytic composite for water purification. My composite combines filtration with photocatalysis. First, the water percolates through the composite filter, which destroys 98% of coliform bacteria. This water can then be placed in sunlight for 100% bacterial inactivation in just 15 minutes. Now, organics are another common contaminant of water, which can cause severe health concerns. So I used an organic indicator dye called methylene blue, which turns from blue to clear when degraded to show that my composite also degrades organics. And unlike traditional photocatalytic solar disinfection methods, which can only harness UV radiation, or 3% of solar radiation reaching the Earth, my composite is also able to harness visible light, which is 44% of solar radiation reaching the Earth. So by combining filtration with photocatalysis, I was able to create a safe, sustainable, and cost-effective means of purifying water. In the future, I hope to deploy my composite in places where water is scarce. Now, from my journey to help solve the global water crisis, I've learned that only when many minds are set on achieving a single goal is it possible to tackle these global challenges. I recently had the opportunity to represent the United States at the International Stockholm Junior Water Prize held in Stockholm, Sweden. Now, the competition was held during World Water Week, and I had the opportunity to speak with experts from scientific, political, industrial, and civic communities who had all come together to find joint solutions for water challenges. I was also able to speak with other young scientists and water advocates like myself who all share my passion for bringing clean water to all. And in order to make this vision of clean water for all a reality, it's imperative 
that scientists, policymakers, economists, and the general public all come together to help solve this global issue. <coughs> you see, we all need water to survive. Water is something that connects us all. And for that reason, we all share the responsibility of making access to clean water available across the globe and to increasing awareness for the global water crisis. Alone, a single drop of water can't do much. But when many drops come together, they can sustain life on our planet. Just as water drops come together to form oceans, we must all come together when tackling this global problem. Thank you.